Hello friends, welcome back to your UPSC. So today in climatology we will be completing climatic classification given by Copain, Thornwith and Trivartha. So let's get started. So climate is actually an average of weather activities taking place over a period of 30 years or more. Okay, so all the weather activities when the average is taken of about weather activities of about 30 years or more than that then this whole average is known as climate okay so now moving on to climatic classification so the whole world or whole world climate is generally classified into certain type of climate and these climate are classified on two bases okay so the first basis is empirical basis while the second is genetic basis so in empirical basis what we do is empirical basis is calculated on we gather a statistical data which we derive through observation and experiments that we do okay while the genetic basis actually is based on the cause of genesis of climatic phenomenon and variations okay now moving on to copain's classification copain's classification is type of genetic classification okay why because here he does not used he has not used any experiment or formulas for giving this classification so copain was a german bio botanist and he classified the climate or climatic uh, or climatic classification given by him was in three orders first is primary order that is principal type in which he used major vegetation zones and the vegetation zones are megatherms, xerophyte, mesotherms, microtherms and hechistotherms. Okay. Then second is secondary classification, secondary type and then tertiary type. Okay. So primary, secondary and tertiary. The original theory that was given by Copain was given in 1874 which was revised in 1918 then 1931 and 1936 lastly he revised the theory with grigor and thus gave copen grigor scheme okay and this was in 1953 so the principal type was designated by capital letter so these are these five are based on vegetation type while this one is based on altitude okay that is these are based on latitudes while this is based on altitude so a signifies or it represent tropical climate humid tropical climate characterized by winterless season warm and moist condition throughout the year and the mean temperature is always above 18 degrees celsius okay next we have b b type of climate it represents dry climate where the evaporation exceeds precipitation okay and the content of water is less hence there is water deficiency throughout the year so here we can see desert climate or steppes climate then the third one is C type it is also known as mesothermal climate it rep represents humid mesothermal or mid latitudinal warm temperature and this region is having mild winter okay mild winter average temperature of the coldest month and the warmest month is between 8 to 18 degrees celsius okay
नेक्स्ट इज आर मीजोथम्स मीज सॉरी माइक्रोथम्स माइक्रोथम्स दे इंक्लूड दे आर डिनोटेड बाय डी कैपिटल डी दे इंक्लूड ह्यूमिड माइक्रोथर्मल और कोल्ड फॉरेस्ट क्लाइमेट एंड दीज आर कैरेक्टराइज बाय सीवियर विंटर्स एंड एवरेज टेम्परेचर ऑफ द कोल्डेस्ट एंड वॉर्मेस्ट मंथ इज बिटवीन थ्री एंड अब टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके बट विंटर्स समटाइम आर लेस देन जीरो डिग्री सेल्सियस ऑल्सो वेल द वॉर्मेस्ट मंथ इज मोर देन टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके ऑलवेज देन वी हैव ई टाइप ऑफ क्लाइमेट विच रिप्रेजेंट्स पोलर क्लाइमेट इट इंक्लूड्स पोलर क्लाइमेटिक कैरेक्टराइज बाय समरलेस सीजन ओके एंड द एवरेज टेम्परेचर ऑफ वॉर्मेस्ट मंथ इज ऑल्सो बिलो टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके सो द एवरेज टेम्परेचर ऑफ वॉर्मेस्ट मंथ विल बी बिलो टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस देन वी हैव एच एच रिप्रेजेंट्स हाई लेंस and this is undifferentiated high, highland climate so wherever we find highland h will be representing them okay so the first order classification was based on vegetation now the second order classification is based on amount of precipitation that the area receives on its basis we can classify this zones into first is capital s capital s it represents steppes where annual precipitation is between 360 to 760 mm then we have w w it represent dry climate okay where annual precipitation is below 250 mm now both of them are applied to b type of climate okay next we have t capital t capital f and capital m so capital t it represents average temperature of the hottest month is between 0 to 10 degree celsius okay f it says that average temperature of the hottest month is below 0 degree celsius and m it state that the abundant this area is having abundant precipitation and mild winters okay so these three categories are applied to e that is polar climate okay then we have small w which represent dry dry season in winter okay so the winters are dry and it is applied to a c and d then we have s small s it it denotes that the summer are dry so this is repres- uh, applied on capital c while we have small m small m it represents monsoon climate okay so small m represent monsoon climate while capital m represent abundant precipitation and mild winter in polar te- polar climatic zone okay so in monsoon we have precipita- precipitation above 1500 mm and the driest month is uh, in the driest month we are having the temperature uh, sorry the precipitation of about below 60 mm okay and it is applied to a type of climate that is tropical climate lastly we have small f small f it represent wet climate and here the precipitation occurs in every month that means there is no dry season and it is applied to a c and d okay now a is tropical climate c is mesothermal while d is microthermal okay 
lastly we have third order classification in third order classification we have divided into five type that is small a small b small c small d okay these are on the basis of range of temperature okay then we have h and k so h represent dry and hot weather so dry and hot weather here average temperature is more than 18 degree celsius and it represents hot deserts while k we have dry and cold weather or dry and cold climate where the average temperature is below 18 degree celsius and it represents cold desert okay now a it rep small a it represents hot summer where the average temperature of the hottest month is above 22 degrees celsius and it is applied to microtherm and mesotherm while b represents moderate summer where the average temperature of the hottest month is below 22 degrees celsius and it is also applied to mesotherm and microtherm okay then we have c c represents short and cold summer so short and cold summer here the hottest month is below the temperature of the hottest month is below 22 degree celsius while the temperature of coldest month is above minus 38 degree celsius okay and the average monthly temperature can range up to more than 10 degree celsius it is also applied to microtherm and sorry mesotherm and microtherm lastly we have very cold winters that is represented by that is represented by small d and it represent here the temperature of the coldest month is below minus 38 degree celsius and it is applied to d that is microthermal climate okay now based on this regime given by copen we have climatic classification so the first climatic classification is in tropical rainy climate that is a so it has four sub type first one is af it is humid tropical climate humid tropical climate where the precipitation in the driest month is more than 6 cm and seasonal distribution of precipitation is more or less uniform throughout the year and very low daily range of temperature here we have very very low daily range of temperature that means the duriniar temperature has a very low range that means cold temperature coldest temperature and warmest temperature they don't have much difference okay then we have aw aw it represents tropical humid and dry climate and dry in winter okay the precipitation of the precipitation here is at least less than 6 cm in one month so one month which is driest okay there the precipitation will be less than 6 cm and the highest temperature Uh, sorry the high the temperature remains high throughout the year okay next we have am that is monsoon climate here we have one short dry season but sufficient annual precipitation okay and thus we are having wet ground throughout the year okay and here also like aw we will have the driest month where the temp where the precipitation will be less than 6 cm lastly we have as as it is dry summer but this type of climate is rarely found okay next we have dry climate that is b 
Now B is also subdivided into four parts. So first is B W H. B W H it represents tropical dry climate where the average temperature is more than eighteen degrees Celsius. Then we have B S H. B S H it represents tropical steppe climate where the mean annual temperature is above 18 degrees celsius so this is tropical desert climate while this is tropical steppes okay so here let us understand the scheme c this is b w k so b represents dry climate then we have w w it represents desert where the annual precipitation is below 250 mm lastly we have small k small k it represent dry and cold climate okay so now i hope you understand how this classification is done okay so this one is bwk is mid latitude cold desert where the mean annual temperature is below 18 degree celsius and lastly we have bsk so b is dry climate s is s is steppes and then we have cold and dry climate here we have mid latitude cold steppes climate where the mean annual temperature is below 18 degree celsius okay then we have humid mesotherm climate which is represented by c capital c it is further divided into three parts firstly we have cf cf we see precipitation throughout the year and the precipitation is more than 1.2 inches even in the driest month of summer okay and this we find in european type of climate it is further divided into two that is cfa and cfb so cfa is humid subtropical while cfb is marine west coast type then we have cw cw it represents dry winter and here we have 10 time more precipitation in the wettest month of summer season than the driest month of winter season so in winter season we have very less rainfall like if cons consider in winter month we have x amount of precipitation then in summer we will have 10x amount of precipitation okay and here this type of climate is is represented in china okay then lastly we have ca ca it represents dry summer and here we have three times more precipitation in the wettest month of the winter season than the driest month of the summer season and the precipitation of the wettest month oh, sorry oh, sorry precipitation of the driest month of the summer season is less than 1.2 inches okay and this is shown in mediterranean type of climate okay then we have fifth type that is 
humid microthermal climate which is represented by d capital d it is divided into two type that is df and dw so df is humid cold climate where there is no dry season okay and it is further subdivided into three that is dfa then dfb then dfc so dfa is continental climate with long cool summer dfd is cool short summer okay it is in sub arctic type lastly we have i'm so sorry i'm so sorry we have dfa which represents long warm summer then we have dfb which represents long cool summer lastly we have dfc that is short cool summer and this is sub arctic type climate okay then we have dw dw it represents humid cold climate where we have dry winters this is also further subdivided into three type that is dwa then we have dwc lastly we have d sorry dwb and lastly we have dwc okay so dwa it represents continental climate with long summer okay then we have dbw which represents cool short summer lastly we have dwc which represents cold winters okay last type we have polar climate that is represented by capital e and it is subdivided into et and ef et represents tundra climate where the temperature of the warmest month is below 10 degree celsius and above 0 degree celsius so warmest month okay while we have ef ef it represents permanent snow field where the temperature of all month is below 10 de below 0 degree celsius okay so with this we complete copen's classification so copen's classification was a, a very easy classification if we evaluate it as it has used simple parameters for climatic classification and it is a simple three scheme classification but this classification it face some drawbacks or demerits so the first demerit is some of the geographers they don't consider this climatic classification but because it was not based on any 
scientific calculation or any scientific proof okay then some climate uh, some geo geographers they said that Copen has given undue significance to mean monthly value of temperature and precipitation in his scheme and like he has neglected all other weather elements such as precipitation intensity amount of cloudiness number of rainy days daily temperature etc et okay and the other demerit is uh, the geographer said that the scheme is more of a descriptive type and generalized he actually ignored considerable causative factors of climate okay and then one of the merit it became a demerit that is he used three letter classification so some of the geographers said that the use of different letters symbol to indicate different climatic type and their secondary and tertiary subtype so this scheme with so many symbols it is very difficult to memorize so these were few merits and demerits of copen's classification now we will move over to thornwitz classification so thornwitz was an american climatologist who gave his classification for north america in 1931 then he gave the full the classification of the whole world climatic classification of the whole world in 19, 1933 and lastly he revised his scheme in 1948 for the whole world okay and for for delimitation of boundaries of different climatic regions delimiting the boundaries of different climatic region he used two factors two factors that is precipitation effectiveness and the another one is thermal effectiveness so the precipitation effectiveness or precipitation efficiency we can also say is the amount of total precipitation available for vegetation growth okay then the another scheme was thermal efficiency it another factor was thermal efficiency or thermal effectiveness he actually considered that the positive departure of monthly mean temperature from the freezing point is also important for vegetation growth in that area okay so this was represented by thermal effectiveness now based on precipitation effectiveness in 1933 he gave this was his 1933 theory the revised theory we will study in uh, in further in this video so in this 1933 theory on the basis of precipitation that is precipitation efficiency he classified climate into five types that is a which is wet climate also named as rain forest where the precipitation efficiency index is more than 127 okay then we have b that is humid climate where this is represent there we can see forest type of vegetation here we had rain forest type of vegetation here we will have forest and here the precipitation efficiency index will be between 64 to 127 then we have c that is sub humid zone here we can see grassland vegetation and here precipitation efficiency index is between 32 to 63 then we have sub arid that is steppes where precipitation index is 16 to 31 and lastly we have e representing arid zone which is desert type of vegetation and here we have precipitation efficiency index that is below 16 okay now this precipitation efficiency index was further subdivided into four 
that is R, S, W and D. So R, it represents distribution and it was subdivided on the basis of distribution of precipitation. Okay. So R here means rainfall or precipitation all season. S means sparse rainfall in summer that means dry summer. W means sparse rainfall in winter, uh, small sparse precipitation in winter that means dry winter and lastly we have D. D means sparse rainfall or sparse precipitation in all seasons. Okay. These are actually in small letters. So this is small r, small s, small w and then small d. Okay. Then on the basis of thermal efficiency, he subdivided these zones into or these thermal provinces into six types. That is A dash, it represents tropical province where the thermal efficiency index was above 127. Then we had B dash, it represents mesothermal province where the thermal efficiency index was between 64 to 127. Then C dash would represent microthermal area having thermal efficiency index between 30 to 263. Then we had D dash representing taiga having thermal efficiency index ranging between 16 to 31. Then we had tundra that is represented by E dash having thermal efficiency index of 1.15. Lastly we had forest sorry frost. Frost was represented by thermal efficiency index of 0. Okay. So on these basis, he actually gave 120 probable combinations. But in, on, in the real picture, he actually was able to find only 32 climatic types on this basis. So these th 32 climatic types were like, we had A, A dash, so A represents wet that is rainforest, A dash represent tropical and R represents all season rainfall. So it will represent tropical wet climate with rainfall, adequate rain, rainfall for whole year okay, or for all seasons. So likewise he gave 32 climatic types. Now then, in 1948 classification, this classification that he gave was based on PE that was, that is potential evapotranspiration. Potential evapotranspiration is actually an index of thermal efficiency and water loss. And this index represents the amount of transfer of moisture and heat to the atmosphere from soil and vegetation. So the amount of moisture and heat that is transferred to atmosphere by soil and vegetation is represented in potential evapotranspiration. Okay. So for this he gave this formula and for determining the boundaries of different climate he developed four indices on whose basis he gave his climatic classification. So the first index was moisture index. Moisture index it refers to the moisture deficit or surplus and is calculated according to I am where S is monthly surplus moisture and M is monthly deficit moisture. Okay. 
so this uh, sorry moisture index it refers to moisture deficit or moisture surf surplus okay then we have thermal efficiency index thermal efficiency in the index is simply the potential evapotranspiration expressed in centimeters okay then we had aridity index aridity index and humidity index so in aridity index and humidity index aridity index is the it is represented in sorry first three these indices they are used to determine seasonal distribution of moisture adequacy okay so they determine seasonal distribution of moisture adequacy so in these firstly we calculate aridity index aridity index is calculated in moist climate where the annual water deficit takes taken as the percentage of annual potential evapotranspiration okay so here we use this in moist climate while the humidity index it is used in dry climate okay where the water surplus is taken as the percentage of annual potential evapotranspiration okay lastly we have concentration of thermal efficiency so concentration of thermal efficiency it refers to the percentage of mean annual potential evapotranspiration accumulating in Three summer months. Okay. So on this four basis, he gave his climatic classification. Okay. So the Thornwitz classification, if we evaluate it, it is actually very scientific classification based on various formulas. So. many of the geographers they accepted this theory okay this type of classification but in its t merit this merit is only considered as some of the geographers they said that here we have too much of calculation too much of formulas for the climatic classification okay so this was merit and demerit of thornwitz classification now we will move over to trivartha's classification so trivartha's climatic classification it was given by an american climatologist that is gt trivartha and this theory this classification is a blend of empirical and genetic classification okay and here we have classified the climate into six major type out of which only one that is dry region is classified on the base of precipitation and rest all the others the, the other five are represented or classified on the basis of temperature okay so here we have all the six types these six type are tropical humid represented by a then we have dry climate represented by b then we have moist latitude wet climate represented by c then we have microthermal climate represented by d and then we have boreal climate represented by e and lastly we have polar climate represented by f now in tropical humid climate we have subdivided this climate into three types that is af aw and am so tropical humid climate on a whole it is found in low latitudes on either side of the equator and 
here we have adequate rainfall throughout the year plus we have absence of winter season okay so af is tropical wet climate which extends from 5 degree to 10 degree latitude on either side of the equator here we have adequate rainfall throughout the year and it is also known as tropical rainforest climate okay and here we have uniform temperature throughout the year uniform high temperature throughout the year then we have aw which represents tropical wet and dry climate characterized this uh, climate is characterized by uniformly high temperature throughout the year but here we have at least two or more than two dry months hence this type of climate is known as savanna climate okay which is dominated by so this savanna type of climate is dominated by dry trade winds and subtropical anticyclones or subtropical anticyclones during winter season while during summer season they are dominated by equatorial westerlies and intertropical convergence then we have am am type of climate is monsoon climate which receives more than 80 percent of rainfall during the four month or four summer month of monsoon so during summer months of monsoon it receives total of 80 percent of rainfall like if we have 100 percent of rainfall throughout the year so in the four months it will receive the whole 80 percent of rainfall okay now we have dry climate represented by v b sorry so the boundaries of dry climate have been determined on the basis of precipitation variation as we know that i've told you okay so it is this climate is characterized by high evaporation loss of moisture through evapotranspiration exceeding the annual recept of water gain from precipitation so the temp uh, sorry the evaporation or evapotranspiration is more than precipitation here we have extreme seasonal temperature that is very low oh, sorry that is the range of temperature is very extreme okay then we have very low and highly variable annual precipitation with extremely low relative humidity and abundant sunshine and clear sky okay so this dry climate is subdivided into four types first we have bwh bwh is subtropical hot dry climate hot desert climate then we have bwk bwk is mid latitudinal or temperate boreal cold dry climate okay then we have bsh bsh it represents tropical or subtropical steppes or semi arid climate while bsk it represents mid latitude or temperate or boreal steppes climate okay now we have mid latitude wet climate represented by c here actually in the coldest month we can see 18 degree isotherms at the equator side okay at the equator world boundary of the sea climate okay so the areas having sea type of climate that is mid latitudinal wet climate so the area which are near or which are having low latitudes will be having 18 degree celsius of temperature in the coldest month now this type of climate this mid latitude wet climate is subdivided into three that is cs cs it represents subtropical some humid climate with dry summer which is also known as mediterranean climate then we have ca ca is subtropical humid climate and lastly we have cb 
सी बी इज मिड लैटिट्यूड मराइन क्लाइमेट ओके सो सी एस वी कैन सी इट इज फाइन वी कैन फाइंड इट ऑन द वेस्टर्न साइड ऑफ द कॉन्टिनेंट ऑन ट्रॉपिकल मार्जिन ऑफ द मिड लैटिट्यूड इट इज अफेक्टेड बाय सब ट्रॉपिकल एंटी साइक्लॉनिक कंडीशन इन समर एंड बाय द वेट वेस्टर्लीज इन विंटर देन वी हैव सी ए सी ए इज इट इज लोकेटेड ऑन द ईस्टर्न साइड ऑफ द कॉन्टिनेंट and it receives precipitation in all season but the summer month receives more rainfall than the winter month okay this is china type of climate lastly we have cb cb is affected by westerlies throughout the year okay then we have microthermal climate represented by capital d this microthermal climate is found in the area of high mid latitudes okay high middle latitudes which are affected by westerlies in summer and by polar winds in winter so on the pole world and equator world boundaries we have average temperature of 10 degree celsius for 4 months in the pole world side and for 6 months in the equator world side okay now this d type of climate it is subdivided into four types first is da da is continental humid climate with temperature of the warmest month is above 65 degree celsius then we have db db is actually continental humid climate with temperature of the warmest month below 22 degree celsius then we have dc dc is subtropical sorry subpolar climate with short summer seasons lastly we will have dd where the temperature of the coldest month is less than minus 38 degree celsius okay now we have boreal climate boreal climate is located in the high middle latitude and is characterized by a short and cool summer season and long and very cold winter and there is very short frost free season which ranges from 1 to 3 months of year having a, and these 1 to 3 years 3 months of a year they are having average temperature of 10 degree celsius or more okay lastly we will have polar climate polar climate is represented by f and here the summer season is absent like in tropical humid climate we had we had absence of winter season likewise in polar climate that is f we had we have absence of summer season <coughs> now in this type of climate polar winds are dominant throughout the year and these climate are found in northern hemisphere only okay now here the average month of the temp average temperature of the month or year never we can record the temperature above 10 degree celsius and on the basis of temperature variation we can divide them into ft and ff so ft is tundra climate while ff is ice cap climate okay so ice cap climate is snow covered throughout the year where the temperature range is below 0 degree celsius throughout the year and here it is 0 to 10 degree celsius okay so this was trivartha's classification and this classification is most popular among the geographer because of its simplicity as this classification climatic classification is very simple unambiguous and it is mixture of both empirical and genetic method of climatic classification and it uses only two weather phenomenon or two weather element that is precipitation and temperature and unlike thornwood it uh, actually avoids vigorous statistical statistical and mathematical calculation in determining climate type 
of a place and demarcating it its boundaries okay this scheme or this trivartha's classification it also included the effect of land and water surface in on the climate or effect of land and water surface on the climate of an area okay so this was the drawback of uh, of copen copen's classification and thornwitz classification which trivartha tried to remove or eradicate okay so this theory was given by trivartha and with this we complete our climatic classification so that was all for today guys i hope you enjoyed today's lecture so let's meet in our next class till then take care and have a nice day